Hi, this is JC, and this is JC Crowell Draws. Today, we're going to be building a bee using different stuff from around the house. Then we're going to draw all over the bee different designs of the letter B. So, if you have a computer, open up a word processor again, and find a font that you like. I'm using Arial Black because it's big and blocky and creates a lot of good space for me to draw inside of. So, I'm going to take my first document, turn it from an A to a B, and we're going to print it off. So, we're printing, printing, printing. If you download the B that I supply online, it's pretty big, so you might need to print it smaller if you're going to use a different type of box to help build our B. The materials you will need to build your B are the printed off Bs, some scissors, get permission first, some masking tape, some pencils, maybe permanent markers if you have them, but any marker or paint will do, some glue, regular glue, or a Mod Podge like paper mache glue would be best, and some old cardboard boxes, like food boxes or shoe boxes, and some extra paper like a tablet of paper or just a stack of newspapers. And then also a brush. So as you can see, you want to make sure that your bee can fit all the way on the front of the box that you're going to be using. I'm going to use this smaller bee and I'm going to cut it out. When you cut it out, you need to be very careful and as always, ask permission before cutting anything out. When you cut out your bee, the inside of the bee, the little holes, the two holes inside the capital B, need to be cut out. And there's a special way that we can do this. Basically, we carefully take our pad of paper, put it under our bee. We take the tip of our scissors, put it on top of the space we want to cut out, and then we're going to carefully pull up on the bee. Do not stab into the paper with the scissors. Leave the scissors on the pad of paper on top of the bee, then pull the bee up and it tears a little bit of a hole. It pulls the bee onto the scissors, helping you create a hole that starts um, a way for you to cut out that inside shape. So, carefully cut that inside shape out, and then you'll have a perfect letter B. Always ask permission to use scissors if you don't already have it. Scissors, very useful, very fun, but they can be dangerous. And when we use these scissors today, we are not going to do anything dangerous. We're not going to put any sharp edges or the sharp end, the tip of the scissors, towards our hands or anything important. Then, once we have the bee cut out, we're going to put it on top of our box. Now, try to line it up with the very edge of the box, the very bottom corner. It might be a bit confusing, um, depending on how your box is made, but you're going to try to line it up with the bottom corner of the front of the box. Then take the permanent marker and trace around it. Don't forget to trace those inside negative shapes of the bee. Then, we're going to take our scissors and cut along the long edge of the box uh, on the right side of the bee. This will then give us access to one of the panels. The top part I already ripped off when I ate my macaroni. It was delicious. However, the bottom part I'm going to carefully separate. You could use your finger, you could use the scissors, you could use a popsicle stick, whatever works to help separate that paper carefully so that each panel, each section of it, comes unfolded easily. Now that I have it unfolded, I'm going to take my bee and I'm going to create a mirror image. I'm going to flip it over so that I can trace my bee onto the back so that it will be the exact opposite of my first letter B. And I trace around all the edges, I trace the inside shape. Uh, the back side, notice I'm not tracing because I'm using the edge of that, and we're gonna keep that. Um, it almost kinda looks like a butterfly, right? Now, I'm going to connect the B's bottoms and tops on the box, and I'm going to cut it out. Now, I'm cutting out, uh, I'm cutting off the bottom two flaps under the bees, but then that middle spine, we're going to call that part the spine of the bee, that's going to help make it thick, make it more three-dimensional, I'm going to leave, just as a little bit of a guide. You don't have to, if you accidentally cut it off, you can always add it back on, but this will just kind of give you an idea of what we're doing um, for the rest of the project. So I'm going to use the same technique to pull the cardboard paper onto the tip of the scissors so that the scissors stay against the table safely. They're not stabbing, they're not moving. That's the key. The scissors are not moving. And I move the paper over it to help me start a cut so I can cut out that negative space without cutting up my entire bead. And 
I'll need to do this on both sides, uh, so be very careful with this. Again, always ask permission, maybe get some help if this is a little bit tough for you, because that cardboard, depending on the box, can be pretty tough to cut out. And once I have the negative space, um, that's the empty space inside or around some object or piece of art. Once I have that cut out, I can then take that little flap that I left on my spine. Um, notice I'm turning this inside out so that it's more of a blank surface to work on. Once I have that spine um, ready, I can then cut out the rest of the box, the rest of the spine for our bee. And this spine is gonna wrap around the entire edge of our bee. Now, as you can see, I'm going to get my masking tape, and masking tape works better for this because it's kind of papery. Uh, blue tape isn't necessary, regular old uh, manila masking tape works just as well, uh, but basically kind of a papery tape, not a super plastic tape like scotch tape is what you want to use for this because if it's really, really plasticky, the paper mache, the glue may have trouble sticking um, as you'll see here later in the video. So I'm taking some tape, I am adding it to that little flap of the spine and the bottom of my bee and now voila, it sits up like a three-dimensional object, not a flat piece of art. And then I'm going to take and shape my spine so that it follows the shape of my bee. This part takes a couple trials and a couple errors. Uh, you'll be able to bend it. Don't worry too much because we're going to be covering this in paper anyways. Uh, but don't worry too much if maybe you get some folds or some creases in it because we can cover that up a little bit. Now if you completely mess or tear it up, you might need to grab another box and another spine. So try to be careful not to mess up this spine too much. And just take your time, use tape, and add a third dimension to your letter B. And once you have it all taped up, uh, it doesn't need to be completely taped. Uh, you can then begin to get your scrap paper from when you cut out your letter B. Uh, and we're going to be tearing it up and paper macheing it onto our three-dimensional letter. Now, I'm using Mod Podge. It's great. It's fairly sticky. It's kind of the consistency you want for paper mache. Uh, you can also get paper mache stuff uh, at most any craft or art store, or you can make it on your own. Now, to make your own paper mache paste, all you need to do is get some basic white glue and some water. There's also all sorts of recipes you could search for that might use um, some flour and some other materials. Uh, that's the classic, that's the really old way that people made paper mache. But for something quick and easy, if you already have some glue, basically take a cup, fill it half with water and half with white glue, whatever proportion that is, and mix them together. For these small letters, you're not going to need that much. However, if you want to make a big letter, because remember, you could scale this up to be much, much bigger, you're going to need a lot more paper mache paste. Also, this is going to get messy. This is a bit of a messy project, so I want you to be aware of that. Then, you're going to take the small pieces of paper, tear them into smaller pieces of paper, and glue them onto your letter B. As your paper mache, make sure to get into those edges, get into that negative space, and wrap it around the corners, the sides of all of your letter. You might need to squeeze into the negative space of the letter with a finger or maybe the end of a brush, but either way, 
just try to get it to wrap around. If it doesn't in the end when it dries, you can always cut it off with some scissors or even tear it off as long as you use enough glue. And here we have an accident, a mess. Always make sure to clean up your messes as soon as possible. Again, this is a messy project. That's why we have this pad of paper here under my project to help catch any spills. But accidents happen and I, uh, I'm pretty accident prone. And once we have the glue cleaned up, the donut back in place, the desk wiped off, because I do not want to ruin my nice new desk. We're gonna keep on paper mache. And this is paper mache. Basically, we're taking paper, we're gluing it to the surface, we're using the glue to then add another layer. And the more layers you can put of paper mache on this project, the better. I'm only gonna do one. Um, there might be some little spots uh, here and there that you can see. So if after it dries, you see you missed some spots, what's great about paper mache, you can always add some more. And the more you let it dry with the first layer, and then add a second layer after the first layer is dried, the stronger it will be. In fact, they used to make furniture out of paper mache, and somewhere they still do. And again, I don't like getting my hands messy, but you might have to get a little bit messy. Don't be afraid to use your hands to spread the paper mache glue around so that it covers it evenly and will dry cleanly. And then we just have to let it dry. Maybe you could go think of some other art projects. Maybe you can check out a different art project video that I've shown you on YouTube. Maybe you can think of your own art project. Maybe you could illuminate a letter A. Maybe you could uh, step outside for a moment, get a little bit of fresh air, and then come on back inside and see how it's drying. You will want to give it plenty of time to dry, and eventually, you're going to want to flip it around so that all sides can dry even. While we're drying this right now, Maybe I'll draw some different ideas that I'm going to draw on my bee that we built. I got maybe a bunny playing basketball. Maybe some buildings. Maybe a bee. Maybe a bat playing baseball with his baseball cap. Maybe some broccoli. I love broccoli. It's delicious. It's nutritious. It gets you lots of good vitamins. Maybe a banana. Maybe a brick ball. Maybe a boogeyman. Maybe a bank. Whatever ideas you come up with, we're going to draw it on our letter B with a permanent marker. You could use other markers as well. You could use paint. You could even use pencil or pen. Um, but a permanent marker really works great on these kinds of surfaces because, number one, it will be a nice contrast. You'll be able to see those black, dark lines or whatever color clearly. And it will dry pretty quickly, too, so that you don't accidentally smudge it. Otherwise, you might need to go a little slower as you draw. So, I'm going to start off on this side with a brick pattern, a brick design. And I'm going to draw horizontal lines to as evenly as possible. And then I'm going to add my vertical lines that stagger in that brick pattern. I'll add some boogie people, boogie men, boogie women, boogie them. So just their eyes, and then I'll black out the brick to make it look like there's negative space, like there's a gap that they're peeking out of. Now I have some metallic sharpies that then I'm going to add some more dimensionality. I'm going to make this look a little bit more three-dimensional with some shading and some little texture dots. On the back, we're going to go with this B. You can maybe guess what I'm drawing here. Those are butterflies. And I'm overlapping them. Some butterflies are behind other butterflies. I'm gonna add different colors and designs for their wings. This will help them stand out and also just make it look like a nice finished pattern. For the edges, I'm going to add some food. What starts with a bee that we like to eat? Looks like we have a burger, a blueberry, a slice of bread. And then on the edge, you know what, I'm going to go with a bat and a boo. And on the bottom, we're just, we're just going to do birds. 
these birds start with different letters of B, except for that last one there. Maybe you can get what, guess what that last one was. It's a rather big bird. And on the back spine, I'm just going to do a general motif. Now, each of these starts with a different letter of the alphabet, but all together, what do we call them? Bugs. I'm going to draw bugs. And I'm going to sign my artwork this time. And even put the date, because sometimes when you make something, it's nice to remember when you did. You're going to look back and think, wow, I made that? Yes, you did, and you did great. So I'm going to add just a little bit of color. Again, this helps make the pattern feel a little, little bit more finished. It also adds some texture and even can make it look a little bit 3D depending on the colors that you use. And always make sure to put the caps back on your markers. And you now have a three-dimensional letter B. You built a B. And we put all sorts of fun designs on it. Hopefully you were able to get a little bit creative with yours. What'd you draw on your letter B? Did you add B letter words? Or did you just go crazy and have fun? Did you just add patterns? Or did you just color it in fun ways? Whatever you decide, you built a letter B. And of course, with any messy art project, we have to clean up. Now remember, you can do any letter of the alphabet this way. You could spell out your name. You could spell out a friend's name. You could give this as a gift to a family member. You could even take some scissors, maybe cut out a little flap, turn it into a bank. That's up to you. Whatever you decide to do with this letter B, it's going to be pretty fun and pretty awesome. And so take a moment to take some pride in the amazing work that you did. Hopefully you also cleaned your hands and cleaned up your desk or wherever you're making this incredible art. And really enjoy building something from nothing, from what you thought was trash and turning it into something beautiful. That's really what art is about, is taking something and transforming it, using your creativity to turn it into something that maybe you like, maybe somebody else likes, maybe everybody likes, or in the end, maybe you don't like it. And you can always toss it because it was already trash anyways and try to make a new one. Never give up on making art.